good afternoon students today i'll start with type study that is cockroach so one question was left out in the last uh, test paper discussion the question number was One thirty-seven. The question uh, says, "Just a minute." Presence of tissue in a multicellular organism ensures high reproductive potential, body strength, division of labor, and faster development. correct answer is division of labor now what is division of labor is there are variety of tissues and cells they have their own specific functions so they have they are specialized for their own functions so this specialization uh, for a particular uh, for, for performing a particular function is called as division of labors so now i'll start with morphology of cockroach so be before beginning uh, the morphology of cockroach i would like to give some introduction regarding uh, the cockroach so first to which of the taxonomical ranks does it belong so cockroach is an arthropod so it belongs to phylum arthropoda and it belongs to class insecta and its genus name is periplanata americana genus name is periplanata where a specific name is americana so together the species name will be periplanata americana it belongs to order dictyptera and family blatteri however these points are more important then general introduction regarding cockroach so most of the cockroaches uh, around the world there are different species of cockroach around the world they are uh, they are belonging to the insect uh, that is the one that have jointed appendage as you all already studied this since it belongs to class insecta they have jointed appendage they have jointed appendages one of the example of jointed appendages are the legs itself which i'll be explaining here legs antenna legs and antenna cerci these are the different jointed structures uh, present in the cockroach the cockroach are generally dark brown in color and their size will be varying from 1/4 of an inch this is the size of the cockroach 1/4 of an inch 1/4 of an inch at least it may reach to 3 inches so this will be the the size of the cockroach cockroach its habit is it generally runs very 
fast. It runs very fast. It runs very fast and that is why it will be called as cursorial. And rarely it will fly. And it is a nocturnal insect. When we say it is nocturnal insect, it means that this particular animal will be active in the night. Whereas in daytime, it tends to hide and rest. So cockroach will be active in the night. Whereas in the daytime, it is going to hide and take rest. So that is nocturnal insects. Then it generally lives in da damp place. Apart from that, its uh, feeding habits, its omniotes, its nutrition. It is a Omniore and omniore is the one that will feed upon almost any of the substances. Okay, it can be a page, it can be cardboard, it can be even animal matter, plant matter, almost most of the things it can consume cockroach. So it's a omniore. Omniore is actually basic definition of uh, omniore is it depends both on animal matter as well as plant matter. But apart from this, it can even have many uh, uh, things also it can consume. So it is omniore. It also shows cannibalism. So it will live in damp places. It generally tends to live in Damp places. Damp places are those which are wet, which when where there is more uh, like wetness is there, as well as it should be more warmer. Damp and warm places, it is going to live. That is its living place. Okay, the cockroach uh, will usually live in the crevices. Okay, in it can be in the house, it can be office or it can be any of the factories or it can be any enclosure uh, wherein in the crevices it is going to be uh, present. So in the sewers, etc. So it requires usually a damp place and a warm place to live in. So that becomes its habitat. So this is nothing but its habitat. So morphology of, uh, before beginning to morphology, this is just, these all are uh, an introduction to so cockroach is no good to humans because usually it is acting as a serious pest that means it is going to cause some diseases it can be responsible for causing some diseases in what way is it is a passive vector. So passive vector, vector is the one that is responsible for transmission of disease. Passive transmission, it means that its body do not involve in life cycle of a disease, but it will passively transfer the pathogens uh, such that even healthy individuals will come into contact with those pathogens and get the disease. So especially it can be a foodborne diseases or waterborne diseases. Uh, it can transfer such type of diseases that are foodborne and waterborne. It can be typhoid, it can be uh, even uh, gastroenteritis, it can be. So like these are some of the diseases that can be transferred, passively transferred through the cockroach. So apart from passive transfer, some people can even be allergic to the components uh, that are transferred by this cockroach. So this was about certain introductory 
points regarding there are some cockroaches which can take up other colors like green and all red but most commonly they are dark brown in color and now i'll start with morphology of cockroach so morphology of cockroach uh, in that first uh, like morphology of which species of cockroach is considered is periplanata america periplanata america Peri planeta America. So this is the generic name, and this is the specific name, or you can tell genus name, and this portion is species name. Together will be particular species of cockroach. This species, Peri planeta Americana, is widely distributed on the earth. Originally, it was most more confined to USA, but now it is spread all around the world, even replacing the native species like Blata orientalis. In this India, as well as in Oriental uh, region, uh, Blata was a predominant species, but that was replaced by Periplanata. So you can tell it is uh, uh, an example of alien species invasion. So this is the uh, periplanata. I mean, this is the morphology of. Uh, I'll be explaining the morphology. Periplanata americana. It, as I told, it's widely distributed. It is again uh, dark brown in color. So brown in color. So it may range from three point four to 5.3 centimeters in the size that will be the size of Periplanata Americana. So this will be um, about its length and all general properties of what you call uh, the general properties of other cockroaches also are there that means its habit habitat is almost the same like any other cockroach. So beginning uh, with what does this body consist of? What are the broad divisions of the body? So broad divisions of the body here, Periplanata Americana will be divided into head, thorax, and abdomen, head, thorax, and abdomen are the three divisions, uh, body divisions of cockroach. That means So if this could be the head region of cockroach, this will be the prothoracic region, then the thoracic segment and then comes the abdominal segments and this is a notch for the 10th targa, targal notch it is. So head, so this one, this is the head, this will be the head of the cockroach, this portion, this is going to be the thorax of a cockroach and this is going to be the abdomen of the cockroach.
cockroach. This figure is a schematic. It is without the wings. That means further it should be consisting of the wings. Okay. But these are the broad divisions of the cockroach. Okay, this is the body division. So, body of the cockroach, here we mean Periplanet Americana, is covered almost entirely. That is, the entire body is converted in, is covered by an exoskeleton. Exoskeleton. The exoskeleton is present on the exterior of the body and this covers the entire body parts of the cockroach and this exoskeleton is chitinous. It means that it is made up of a special homopolysaccharide called chitin. So what is chitinous is it is going to So, what is chitinous is it is going to contain it is going to contain a homopolysaccharide called chitin. So, exoskeleton made up of chitin covers the entire body of the cockroach. Okay, it is a, a tough exoskeleton. Okay, so this exoskeleton is not continuous throughout the body. It means that thorax region has exoskeleton and abdomen region also have exoskeleton but this exoskeleton is not continuous but it's instead it is divided into plates so exoskeleton is divided into plates exoskeleton is divided into plates Now these plates, these plates are named as sclerites. These plates are named as sclerites. Okay. So sclerites will be plates. That means suppose the thorax is having three segments that means each segment will have one one plate here one plate on above one plate on below like this three plates are going to be there below there is going to be one more plate and on sides also there are going to be plates these are exoskeleton plates called as sclerites now consider this is one of the segment and there is a plate on exoskeleton plate on top as well as there is an exoskeleton plate on below. So this is the dorsal end and this is the ventral end. So dorsal end it is called as the dorsal side of the body. Suppose this is a side view of one of the segments. The dorsal side it will be called as tergite. The sclerites present on the dorsal side of the cockroach are called as tergites. Whereas clearides present on ventral side of the cockroach is called as sterna or sternites. Sterna or sternites. So tergum you can tell, sternum, tergum and sternum. Okay. So this was about the chitinous exoskeleton. Now these exoskeleton, suppose the exoskeleton covers here. This is the 
tergum. This is the sternum. Now connecting between them on the lateral side, there is one more plate called pleuron. Those are the lateral sclerites present. And now connecting them will be a membranous, a membranous, uh, membranous uh, articular membrane. It is very flexible membranous structure will be there that connects these sclerites. They are called as arthrodial membrane. So what you should know is the, the exoskeleton is not continuous, but it is divided into plates and those plates can be connected. It can be either dorsal plate, ventral plate or the lateral plates. All of them will be connected by the very flexible membrane. So, so that there is some degree of articulation there, flexible membrane called arthrodial membrane. It is arthrodial membrane. Okay, next is after going into the exoskeleton and next will be the divisions. What are the structures present in the head of the cockroach? What are the structures in the thorax of the cockroach? And what are the structures present in the abdomen of cockroach? So first the cockroach, head of the cockroach. So head head of the cockroach. So head of the cockroach is going to be hypognathous head. Is going to be hypognathous head. Now what is a hypognathous head is Head is somewhat triangular, I'll tell the shape, so it is kind of triangular and then comes the, the body, this will be the side view of an animal, okay. Now this head, if you see this head, it is lying perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the body, that is this is the longitudinal axis. And it is going to be what? Perpendicular to the longitudinal. So head is downward directed such that it forms a 90 degrees with that of a longitudinal axis of the body. If such type of arrangement of head towards the longitudinal, such type of arrangement is there, then it's called as a hypognathous head. Okay. So this and of course head is located anteriorly. So anterior where is almost all of the animals most of the animals the head is located anteriorly it is again one of the important point in civilization so head is it can turn in all directions so it can move in different head can move in different directions in different directions and it is attached to a why how uh, the head has freedom to move in different directions it is because it is attached to a flexible neck so it is attached to the flexible neck because it is attached to the flexible neck so it is it has free it, it moves in uh, different directions continue with the head 
this head is also having plates. There are six plates together. You know that exoskeleton plates are called as clearides. So six clearides together forms the head capsule. Forms head capsule. And of course, this head capsule is a protective head capsule. It means that six chlorides, uh, sclerides will combine and form a protective head capsule, covers the area of the head and protects it. So basically, it is forming a protective capsule. The six clearides are two epicranial plates, two geni, one frons, and clypeus. All together will form the head capsule. Okay. So that was about the sclerites that are covering the head region. The head will bear the sensory structures Now, some of the sensory structures present in the head region will be, for example, antenna, antenna, and another is, say, compound eyes. So, antenna and compound eyes. Now I will explain what is an antenna and what will be the compound eyes. So antenna are sensory structures. It is a sensory structure in the head of the cockroach. What it does is, it is first of all is a jointed structure. It is not an unjointed structure, it is a jointed structure, it means it has segments. So it is a jointed structure and of course in male what happens, it is much larger than that of the female. Okay, and. Uh, this antenna is quite long, okay, jointed structure and is long also. So you might have come across like head, thorax, abdomen, cockroach. So in the front, in the head region arises a, this sensory structure called antenna. So they are supposed to be in pair of antenna are there. So they are supposed to be in pair, okay, they are in. One is the right, another is towards the left. Okay. So, uh, they are the sensory structures. They are jointed structures because many segments are there. Each segment is called as a pole. It is attached, it is present just uh, near to the compound eyes, just in front of the compound eye towards the inner side. It will be present and it is attached to, it is attached to antennal socket it means antenna arises at a particular uh, region called antennal socket so from the antennal socket only antenna arises and this antenna will be present just in uh, front of the eye towards the inner side. Now, what is its function? As I told, it is a sensory, it is a sensory, uh, what do you call, uh, structure. So, it can sense the environment. It means it can take the sensory stimulus from the environment. 
so so movement of antenna will help uh, to detect uh, the environment that means helps to detect the food detect the food and also other objects it detects the food and other objects so it is a sensory structure so it can have both tactile function and even uh, what is called olfactory function so head head is also going to have compound eyes So compound eyes are more or less like kidney shaped like this. So in front towards the, in the front here, antennal sockets and the antenna is going to be there. So more or less these are kidney shaped and has many visual units inside it and that is called as omateria is the visual unit present in the compound eyes. Of course, a pair of compound eyes, two compound eyes are present. Okay, they are more towards the dorsolateral side of the head and they are kidney shaped and have structural and functional units units or you can tell in a single word that there is that they are visual units they are what visual units they are so this is about a pair of compound eyes which are more or less kidney shaped and have structural and functional units or also called visual units or you can tell visual units The name of this visual unit is omateria. The name of this visual unit is called omateria. There are somewhere around 2000 of these omateria in a single compound eye. These are responsible for different types of vision. These compound eyes are responsible for different types of visions like it can be mosaic vision if it is a diurnal insect or it can be superposition image if it is a nocturnal insect. Now uh, th that's what is about the compound eyes. These visual units are like hexagonal in shape. So in a compound eye, so many such hexagonal facets or units will be present throughout the compound eyes and it amounts to, I mean it goes, the number goes to up to 2000 visual units in a single compound Then next will be the thorax of the periplanata america. So thorax of periplanata america. Now thoracic region, three segments are there. So you know that these arthropods are segmented animals and the segmentation is a true segmentation. It means that there is both external division as well as there is an internal division. 
the true segmentation is there. So here also in thorax, there are three segments present in the thorax. So neck is uh, the is connecting the head with that of the first segment of the thorax. So thorax is further divided into three segments. They are prothorax. And another one is mesothorax and another one is metathorax. Prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax. So if you now see this is the head part, this will be the prothoracic region. The next segment will be mesothorax and the next segment will be metathorax. So this much portion becomes what? A thorax. Okay. Then prothorax, of course, this is towards the head, the first segment it is prothorax. In the prothorax, mesothorax, what is situated? Laterally, there is one pair of leg. It means one pair of leg is in prothoracic region. Okay, one pair of leg. Remember, the legs here are jointed legs. That's why they are under phylum arthropoda. So, there is one more pair of leg in the mesothorax and one more pair of leg will be there in metathoracic region okay they are usually attached to the sternal part more towards the direction of sternum rather than terga so this is prothorax one pair mesothorax one pair metathorax another pair. So, three pairs of legs are there. That means a total six legs. That's why they are hexapods. They are, they are called as hexapods. Insects are hexapods because not only cockroach, other insects also they are hexapods because they have six legs. Now, these legs are jointed, I told. So, what are the different joints present and what are the different segments there? So, this one, first initially, this segment will be called the coxa. Coxa is one of the segment in, of the leg of cockroach and the next one coxa is not so large enough it is relatively small uh, compared to the other segments and this is the one that is attaching to the thoracic segments okay so then comes a triangular roughly triangular even though schematically I have drew here triangular it's roughly triangular segment and that is called trochanter That's called trochanter. Okay. So these two were the segments. Now, so I was telling about a small segment, coxa, and roughly triangular trochanter. Then comes femur is also large enough and it is very stout. Stout means it is very stiff, uh, giving that typical bend. So this is femur. This is a femur. It is long and stout. But one of the longest segment comes after this, this one. 
This is called tibia. Longest of all the segments of the leg. Segments of the leg can be called podomeres. So this is the tibia. Longest it is. Okay. So one, two, three, four. Then last segments. The last segments here, they will be called tarsomias. or tarsus together forming tarsus. This portion is tarsus, it's like a foot of a cockroach, foot of the cockroach. So it has total five segments called tarsomias, one, two, three, four and five segments. Now each segment will be named as tarsomere. So, coxa, trochanter, femur, tibia, and tarsus. And the last tarsus is pretarsus. The last tarsomere, the fifth one here, it is called as the pretarsus. It has two claws like this. And then it has aerolium or pulvillus. This pulvillus is a soft hairy pad present between the two claws. And apart from this, each of the tarsomere towards the lower side, it can be covering with plantula. Plantula is adhesive pad. Okay. So two structures. One is the plantula and another is the pulvillus or aerolium. Together helps the cockroach cling to the vertical surface. So, if it is going to sit on to the wall, it is not going to fall off. It is because it has a grip over, uh, good grip over the surface in which it is standing and that grip comes due to aerolium or pulvillus or here these structures are called as plantula. Okay. So, this was about the leg of the cockroach is the jointed leg we say it is because joints are there this is one joint this is a second joint so many joints are there that means it's not made up of a single segment it is multiple segmented uh, part of the body so that is called the jointed appendage so these are the where these legs are uh, supposed to be there is they are present in where the legs are attached, they are not attached to head or abdomen, the legs are attached to thoracic region. So, the head, prothorax, mesothorax, metathorax. And of course, the 10 segments of the abdomen. So, here the legs are going to be attached. So these are the jointed legs. Now coming to second uh, structure which is also present in thoracic region are the wings. Now wings also are present in thoracic. So whatever locomotor structures, they are more confined to this thoracic region. So Wings are present in thorax and also leg is present in thorax. So this was about prothorax. Now next structure which are also present in thoracic region will be the wings. Wings are not present in the wings are not present in the prothoracic region, but instead wings are attached here in the mesothorax and metathorax. So mesothoracic wing and metathoracic wing. Mesothoracic wing 
and metathoracic wing. So first pair of wing, first pair of wing is attached to mesothorax. First pair of wings is attached to mesothorax. And the second pair of wing is attached to the metathorax. So comes the word the mesothoracic wing and the second word metathoracic wing. Now mesothoracic wing has a name here and that is called elytra or tegmina. Another one also one more word is there. It is also called as tegmina or elytra. So So elytra or tegmina. Now what is the difference between the first wing as well as second wing? Now wings are, before going to difference between the two wings, the wings are membranous in case of cockroach. Wings are membranous. Okay, it means that they are extensions from body wall, that is body wall get uh, extended and thus forming a wing. And they have fine tubules branched inside them and where even hemo and is connected to the hemolymph of the body as well as they, they have a supply of nerve cells. So that is how the wings are there. Okay, they are membranous extensions from the body wall. Now, what is the difference between the first wing and second wing? First wing, and this will be the second wing, and the difference between them. First wing is not involved in flight. So, no flight is possible due to first wing. That means the cockroach cannot fly with the help of the first wing which is also called mesothoracic wing. Whereas here in the second wing flight is possible. That means it is a true wing because it can fly with the help of these wings. Flight can be possible or the insect can fly with the help of these. They are called as true wings. The second one difference is they are more opaque or you can tell they are more thick and leathery. So opaque, thick and leather like in uh, texture. That is the nature of this first wing. Whereas the second wing is membranous, translucent it is or you can tell more or less uh, more or less transparent or you can tell translucent okay plus it is membranous Me membranous means more thin see both are membranous but this is going to be thick and opaque this is going to be more it is not absolute transparent it is more like translucent and it is membranous and thin and due to which what is possible is the cockroach is able to fly. However, cockroach rarely flies, but it runs very fast since it has cursorial mode of, uh, mode of uh, movement, locomotion. Okay. So this is the, uh, the wings uh, that are uh, present in the 
cockroach. The thorax has two pairs of spiracles, which are nothing but parts of respiratory system, which I will be explaining in the next class. So here you can see the head of the cockroach I finished two of the topics in the morphology one is the head and the this head is lying perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the body and this is the compound eye which is more or less the kidney shaped it will be more or less and uh, what has what is present here is just uh, towards the inner side in front of it towards the inner side there will be antennal socket to which antenna is attached okay and uh, one more point uh, which i missed out on is the mouth parts the lower part the anterior head lower part will consist of the mouth parts so what is the function of mouth parts and all i'll be telling so this was about the head of the cockroach now in next what i'll be explaining is the mouth parts of cockroach okay So this becomes mouth part of cockroach. So what I have taught so far is regarding the head and the thoracic region and one more point which has to be covered in the head region is the mouth parts and then I will go to the abdominal region of cockroach. So what you have seen so far is what you have seen so far is the this is the compound eye and the antenna. This is the thoracic region and this is going to be the abdominal region and to the thoracic region two pairs of wings will be attached here actually this, this wing should more be near this side that is the mesothorax region. So these two pairs of wings and six pairs of uh, three pairs of legs or total six legs are supposed to be there attached to the thoracic region and this is going to be the abdominal region. Okay, abdominal region I'm going to explain, but one of the point in uh, the head region is missed out and that is nothing but mouth parts. Okay. So here you can see one term has come and this is going to be uh, this is going to be oscillus okay oscillus is the simple eye and it is present towards the inner side of compound eye but more towards the upper end. Now this simple eye why it is called as a simple eye is it is unable to form an image. So image cannot be formed in oscillus but it is sensitive to light that means the light can be detected but that is not in but that is uh, not capable of uh, forming an image. So therefore that kind of an eye is called as the simple eye or also called oscillus. 
then compound I have explained, antenna and antennal sockets have been explained. Now, next important part will be this part that is lower end. So, head itself is present anteriorly to the lower end of the head. What will be present is the mouth parts are supposed to be present. So, what are the different mouth parts present? What type of mouth parts are there? So, mouth parts of cockroach are called biting and chewing type. So, it means that its food is crushed or grinded or masticated. That type of uh, mouth parts suitable for biting and chewing. Uh, will be called biting and chewing type of mouth parts. Okay, different insects have different modes like piercing and sucking, okay, sponging like that, different uh, methods of procuring the uh, food and acting upon the food, but this is having a biting and chewing type of uh, mouth part. It means the food is there, how it procures its food is bites and then chews or masticates, okay, grinds the food. So, that type of uh, that is how its mouth part are adapted, they are adapted for biting and chewing actions, okay. So, the different mouth parts present will be labrum. labium, uh, labrum, mandibles, maxilla, axillae, plural, labium, hypopharynx, Hypopharynx. So, labrum is the upper lip. Mandible are the true jaws. And these are additional jaws, similar to additional jaws. additional jaws whereas labium is lower lip hypopharynx is similar to the tongue so these are similar to So, these are the different mouth parts. Why they are called mouth parts? Please, they surround the mouth. Okay, they are surrounding the mouth. And as they surround, they create a cavity called preoral cavity. Actually, the food first enters the preoral cavity and then goes for the mouth. So, these mouth parts, they surround the mouth and they help in biting and they are chewing and biting and chewing type of mouth parts of the cockroach and they lie lower region of the head in the lower part of the head region these mouth parts are supposed to be there so you can see mandibles labrum labium maxilla this one maxilla hypopharynx like that parts are supposed to be present different parts are supposed to be present The next will be, so you can see here there is a mouth part of cockroach. Which is given in NCRT.
Okay. Uh, one minute. Uh, so even though this image is not so clear, this is a labrum. Okay. So labrum is So this is the labrum. Labrum will be upper lip and these two are mandibles. These mandibles, uh, they do horizontal movement and then crush the food. They do mastication. So they are the true jaws. And assisting the food to go towards the mandibles will be the maxillae. These are the maxillae. This is the maxillary palp. And this will be the labium, the lower lip, preventing the food from falling. This helps in folding food. And in the preoral cavity will be the tongue called hypopharynx. And the base of the hypopharynx, the salivary gland will, duct of salivary glands will open. So hypopharynx will direct that saliva and help in mixing that saliva to the food that is present in the preoral cavity. So these are surrounding and the directions is this is the upper part, lower end. Just near to the labium will be maxilla, above to the maxilla will be mandibles and mandibles will be attached to the geni, which is nothing but the uh, one of the sclerite of the head. So this was about the, uh, what is called uh, the mouth parts of cockroach. So in the next class, I will continue with abdomen. And another, uh, and then uh, various uh, systems present in cockroach.